In this video, we're going to learn about transmission gates. So first of all, what is a transmission gate? Well, a transmission gate is this hypothetical thing where if we have an input, then if the transmission gate is on, then the input is just passed straight through to the output. But if the transmission gate is off, then the input is blocked from the output. So it acts like a switch. In other words, when the switch is on, the input just goes straight through. When the switch is off, the input gets blocked and the output is disconnected from the input. So first of all, why would we want something like this? Well, it's very useful for, in particular, things like multiplexing. So when we're trying to choose between two different signals, for example, A and B, we can use transmission gates to selectively block one signal and let the other one through. And this is this works well in either analog. This works as an analog or a digital multiplexer. They can also be used as gates in and of themselves. So they can be used to create transistor logic, just like all the other gates we know and love. So how do we build a transmission gate? Well, we know some things that happen to act like switches. That would be transistors. So in particular, we have our NMOS and our PMOS transistors to work with. So let's start with the NMOS. What happens when we try to make a transmission gate just out of an NMOS transistor? So say, let's just turn it on its side so that we can have our input on the left and our output on the right. And because we've already called this the input, I'm gonna call this signal that we're sending to the gate phi. And that's just a standard thing to call, the, uh, to call this control signal to the transmission gate. So what happens when phi is equal to zero volts? Well, in this case, the NMOS is off. The NMOS is off. And so the input is isolated from the output. So this acts just like the switch, the open circuit that we we're looking for. And so the output is isolated from the input. And that's great. Um, that, that seems to be exactly what we want. But what about when the control signal is equal to VDD? Then the NMOS should be on. So our NMOS, our circuit, if we redraw it, it looks something like this. This is VDD. Our NMOS should be on, but there's a problem. Because if our signal is, if our input is zero volts, then there's no problem. The output is also zero volts. But if our input is equal to VDD, then the output can be at most VDD minus the threshold voltage of the transistor. And that's because the source of an NMOS has to be, or the gate to source voltage has to be at least the threshold voltage. And so the NMOS isn't very good at passing zeros. And so while we want this to look like just a wire from the input to the output, it's right now kind of a, a bad wire. So it sort of passes our input signal, but not quite. What happens if we instead use a PMOS? So you might say, well, you know, NMOS doesn't seem to work. Let's try a PMOS. So if we have our PMOS and this is our control signal phi, we've got our input and our output, then what happens when our control signal phi is equal to one? Well, then the PMOS is just off and it doesn't matter what the input is equal to or the output, our transistor is always going to be off. And so it acts like the open circuit that we want. It isolates the input from the output. But now what about if phi is equal to zero. Now, our PMOS, if we just redraw it, this is equal to zero volts. Our, if our input is equal to VDD, then we don't have any problems. Our output is equal to VDD. But now if our input is equal to zero volts, then our output turns out can be at most the threshold voltage. And that's because this is so this is the source of the PMOS. Oh, sorry, drawn it with a little got to draw it with a little dot. This is the gate of the PMOS and this is the drain. And in order for this transistor to be on, 
our source to gate voltage has to be at least the magnitude of the threshold voltage. And so if it's any lower than the threshold voltage, this transistor will be off. So in this, our PMOS, ideally we wanted it to be on, but it's not quite on. And so we want it to act like a wire, but it doesn't quite act like a wire. And so you might have seen, well, if a PMOS really sucks at passing zero volts, and an NMOS isn't very good at passing VDD, then if we combine them, they should be able to overcome each other's shortcomings. And indeed, that is the case. So if we designed our transmission gate where we had a PMOS and on one side and then an NMOS in parallel with each other, so this is our input, this is our output, and we send our control signal phi to the NMOS. The only trick here is that our PMOS signal, our PMOS control signal has to be inverted. So we have to take the not of the control signal. And that's because we want the PMOS and the NMOS to be off and on at the same time. So in this case, when phi, let's do this in, in blue, when phi is equal to zero, then the NMOS is off. So the NMOS is off. And similarly, not phi, so phi with a little over bar, will be equal to one. And so our PMOS is off. And so this gate does exactly what we want it to when phi is equal to zero. The input is isolated from the output. So it acts just like an open circuit. Our input is isolated from our output. But now, if phi instead, so let's say that phi is now equal to 1, then our NMOS is on. And remember that NMOS can pass a 0 very well. So if the input is 0, then the output will be 0 because the NMOS is good at doing that. And similarly, our not phi signal, not phi, is equal to 1. And so the PMOS is on. And the PMOS can pass VDD very well. And so together, either the NMOS or the PMOS will be doing most of the work. But regardless of which one is on, we're able to connect the input to the output. So regardless of whether the input is 0 or 1 VDD or 0 volts, our input is able to make it to the output. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.